ability to bring people and assets together, looking at things like working process or whip flows in, in the manufacturing plant, uh, and then having the ability to look at those assets and their location, bringing down the actual retrieval times of those assets has increased productivity, productivity significantly. You know, case studies show that, for example, in, in a, with an operations manager in the semiconductor plant, they saw the, uh, the, the improvement in retrieval times by around 82%. And then the the on-time delivery was was significantly improved by around 13%. Other areas would be improved equipment utilisation of those assets, uh, inventory stock levels to look at par level management, labour efficiency is key in in that space, Uh, and then obviously compliance around, for example, torque settings of screws or whatever it's to be, then then it it looks at things like scrappage rates, so it it all kind of joins together. This is the key area, obviously, having the right infrastructure to start off with is going to drive location-based services into your, into your manufacturing base. So identifying the right use cases from a, from a customer's perspective and obviously the right costs that they're willing to pay for it you know, is, is the kind of key to, to success. So understanding, for example, the location of the device or asset or person down to 1.5 or 2 metres, for example, to provide compliance information and other information about a device or person. But it's a kind of a trade-off between using the infrastructure costs, uh, for example, looking at Wi-Fi for, for the location, and then things like Bluetooth low energy, or virtual Bluetooth low energy for the accuracy rates down to that particular zone. But we have a Cisco validated architecture, CVD at Cisco, that covers everything from the device at the bottom level for the RFID tags, for the passive and active tags, up to the wireless infrastructure with the Cisco access points, for example, and then the applications that sit on top of that, that gives you that single pane of glass view, and then what we do is obviously build security across the, the whole architecture itself. So when you're looking at supply chain, you know, the first things everyone look at, looks at from a manu- manufacturing perspective is, is par level management. So looking at your stock, for example, understanding your stock of it from a single pane of glass, uh, you know, so that you can use that on a mobile device or anywhere. And then that t- ties into things like just-in-time manufacturing, the ability to, to then tie that into reducing your wastage and your scrappage. Uh, and then other areas would be, for example, looking at the pallet level, so identifying items at the pallet level before you ship them out, uh, which then, then allows you to sequence those pallets in the right order so that you, you're obviously providing that to your customers as soon as possible. Other areas would be uh, component longevity, so looking at your components you're using in the manufacturing areas, uh, be able to maintain, look at the maintenance records of those components and then audit trail them from, a, from an audit, auditing perspective. Other areas would be looking at your raw materials in your warehousing, for example. So um, you know, those raw materials, how they're being controlled from a temperature and humidity perspective. So identifying that and making sure that they're always kept to the right level. And that applies also, also into fleet management as well. So safety, obviously, in manufacturing is a, is a key number one area for them. Um, and what we've seen is the sensor technology has changed significantly over the last five to six years. First of all, obviously, with battery life, so the extended battery life of those sensors, for example, and then the cost of those tags and sensors coming down significantly. That then drives into areas around personal protective equipment. So PPE is a key area around safety, embedding that sensor technology into wearable clothing, whether it's a hard hat, whether it's a helmet, whether it's gloves, are those people wearing those uh, those gloves, those hard hats, or those helmets before they enter that particular zone? What we then do, obviously, you know, is, is tie that into technology around panic button sensor technology, loan worker safety in oil and gas, or obviously in various other safety uh, situations and tox- toxic situ- situations and zones, for example, that you have in chemical plants. You then you can then tie that into around things like around digital signage, so the ability to put signs up around the manufacturing plant from an evacuation procedure perspective and obviously for other areas. But, but the whole point is, is providing compliance around safety and obviously looking at your insurance-based modelling that then drives into that to reduce your costs. From a, from a, from a workforce perspective in the digital area, what we need to see is investing in those, in those workers to embrace new technologies in, in the digital area, area effectively. So things like around virtual reality, augmented reality, using those type of technologies to, to, in prototyping, so the ability to obviously create that prototype, uh, you know, uh, obviously virtually uh, on a number of occasions with various teams to, uh, to then 
bring that product prototype to market extremely quickly and their speed to market is key without physically having to make it. Obviously when you do make that prototype, you then obviously make it, you know, hopefully the first time round without having to make many, many different versions of prototypes, reducing your scrappage rates, you know, is, is one area. Other areas would be, for example, in, uh, you know, having things like bring your own device, so the ability to bring your mobile devices to work and then using the applications that you can provide to look at machine maintenance, machine location, asset location and safety and security.